So maybe you're just like me and you wish you could go work out outside, but the weather is just not cooperating. Or maybe you have your own reasons to take back your health. Well, a great way to get a fantastic workout is spinning. So today I'm going to show you how to build the perfect spin bike using the Peloton digital app. So the first thing you're going to need is something to load Peloton digital from and really anything that's connected to the internet and can display a web page will work. So a laptop will do the job or an iPad or an iPhone, Android phone or tablet or an Amazon fire device. I don't have an Amazon fire. And the hope is that you already have one of those devices. Now, ideally it's a tablet because then you can stick it right on a bike and it's going to fit there. It's still pretty large screen and you can work away, but you can still make those other devices work. But what else do you need to make this perfect spin bike? Well, we got to start with a bike. So obviously you need a spin bike and there are a lot of great models out there. Now my focus has been trying to find something that was about one fourth the cost of the Peloton all in and the Peloton, depending on how you package, it might be $23, $2,400 or more. And this here is currently at $550. So once you throw on some of the other components, we can really be in the 600 to $650 range, giving you a Peloton like experience at roughly one fourth the cost. So my next video is going to be an in-depth review of this bike. So if you want to know more, hit that subscribe button. So you know when it comes out. But the short version is, I love this model because it's kind of like a mini Peloton. It's got magnetic resistance, which I think is very important, and a large flywheel. It's got the tablet holder to put your device up there so you're looking at your screen much like the Peloton experience. And it's highly adjustable, allowing you to make sure it's gonna fit you, moving that seat around, moving the handlebars up and down, making sure it fits you and you don't develop pains or anything like that. You're gonna feel like you're meant to be on the bike. So all in all, I love this bike, and I think it's a quality option for those looking in that five to $600 price range. Oh, and if you don't feel like looking for all these products, just expand that description. I got them all linked for you. Now, something that I think is gonna be imperative that you get is a cadence sensor. And this basically is a small device that reports back to the Peloton app how fast you're spinning. Now, this is important because one of the main things about the Peloton experience is that you have instructors guiding you. And during this, they're going to say, increase or decrease your resistance, spin this fast. Well, if you don't know how fast you're spinning, it becomes very challenging to know if you're actually doing what they want. And this device by Wahoo does just that, but I'm going to get off the floor before I tell you more about it. All it is is this little device right here that attaches to the pedal crank. Now you want to put it on the inside so it doesn't bump your foot or your leg and you can attach it multiple ways. They give you a double sided sticky pad but I like this little container here and wrap around solution. It hooks on nice and tight, doesn't go anywhere and it works really well. Now Wahoo does make an app, so I would recommend downloading that and connecting it just in case there's firmware updates. So that way you can make sure you're using the latest software for the device. But from there, you just connect it to the Peloton app. You'll see an icon on the right side that you click on. It'll tell you to look up your devices. You'll see it, you click it, and then you'll see Cadence start reporting on the screen as you ride. So it's actually very, very simple to use and crucial to get that Peloton experience. So another thing you should consider getting is a heart rate monitor. This connects to the Peloton digital app, just like the Cadence sensor. You click on the little connected devices icon, you'll see the ability to connect a Cadence sensor as well as a heart rate monitor. You click on it, it'll see your device. These pop right up, you connect it, and it's got that information on the screen. So this is important for a couple reasons. First is that it puts your heart rate right on the screen. And this just gives you a better idea of how hard you're truly working out and lets you kind of push yourself harder or maybe pull back if you need to and get within certain ranges. And that ties right in with Peloton's heart rate training zones. They'll tell you to try to get in zones one, two, three, four, or five and what those mean. And you can try to target those zones and this will tell you if you're in them or not. So it just gives you some extra information. I also believe it helps Peloton calculate your calorie burn so that becomes a little more accurate and just does some neat things has more information on the screen, engages you a little more, and just makes the overall ride a little more interesting because you have something else to track. So I do recommend it. Maybe not as important as the Cadence sensor in this situation, but if it were me, I would get both just because it amps up the ride a little bit, gives you more information, and kind of just makes you more interested in what you're doing and motivates you to ride a little harder. Because some of the rides include lifting, you're gonna want hand weights. Now don't think of this as that I'm trying to bulk up weightlifting. It's more of a cardio weightlifting. So a three pound weight like this is gonna be all you need because it's gonna be a segment where you're doing the motions for quite a while, not just a quick rep. 
So anything too heavy, you're not gonna be able to stick to it. A lot of people go for one, two, or three pound weights. Now I recommend getting these for a few reasons. One, because it's cheap. These are like $13 on Amazon, so it's not a big deal to get them and allows you to include those type of rides with a Peloton. But also, it's nice to mix in those rides every once in a while. Sometimes it's nice because it gives you a break mid-ride. If your legs are getting tired, you ride at the beginning, then you do your lifting segment, and then you finish it off when your legs are maybe feeling a little fresh again and you can power through the rest of that ride. But also, you sit up straight, you do these lifting motions, and you're engaging a lot of different muscles than you normally do on the Peloton. So it's great just to kind of hit that up and get those different muscles engaged. So now you have everything you need to set up the perfect Peloton digital spinning bike. You just need to install the app on your device of choice and get it running. Now lucky for you, at the time of this filming, they just announced that they reduced the cost of the Peloton digital app from $19.49 a month to $12.99 a month. Once you get the app set up, you'll notice that it's not just cycling apps. There are a lot of different options that let you get different types of workouts, so that's great. But we're focusing on cycling right here, so really you just want to filter down, select the type of ride you want to do, and go ahead and start. From there, on the right side, you'll notice an icon that you can click that will allow you to connect your heart rate monitor and your cadence sensor. So make sure you do both of those things so that you have that valuable information on your screen. And once you put this all together, you should have something like this. You know what you need to do to build the perfect Peloton digital bike. Now it's up to you. If you've already got the bike, you got it for a reason. Now go turn those reasons into reality. Now if you're looking for more content about Peloton digital or this sunny bike, check out this video right here. If you'd like to subscribe, you got this option right here. But until next time, here's to a healthier you and have a good one.